were saying, you know, that day will mark a precedent which brings no news of Rockwell Kent. And that was in 1937. So this is like 1967, 1968, Joey finds this correspondence between the uh, government of Newfoundland and Rockwell Kent going back to 1914, um, writes a letter to his relatives saying, you know, on behalf of the Newfoundland government, we're very sorry what happened to, uh, to Rockwell Kent and uh, we'd like to apologize to your family. And his descendants gave Rockwell Kent that letter because he was still alive. And, uh, and Rockwell Kent wrote Joey back and said, you know, no hard feelings. And, uh, I mean, Joey, for all of his, you know, small time roots and all that stuff was, you know, he was, you know, he, uh, he loved cultivating, you know, the attention of the Rothschilds and all these, you know, people, highfalutin people. And I think for him, uh, Rockwell Kent, who was both, you know, he was a mixture of, you know, we, we think of him as being a socialist or a communist, but he was, he was a, pretty good capitalist too, with uh, you know, marketing his own material and his own brand very early on. But I think uh, Smallwood liked the way he liked uh, Castro in Cuba. You know, I think he liked the idea of a strong socialist man and an artist in his own right to, to bring him back. And so they had a grand time, apparently. I mean, there might, there might be people in this room who remember that, uh, that Kent's visit back in the, uh, I guess it was the late 60s or early 70s? When, 69. When 60, 68. 69. Yeah. Well, Joseph Smallwood declared a holiday in Newfoundland. Is that right? When the, the Americans landed on the moon. Okay. So I, <laughs> <laughs> I thought of that the other day when they had the anniversary that we had a holiday that day. <laughs> Smallwood was also so 